Hey guys, today we are testing out this incredible London Sunshine Kamado style grill, the Mini Cadet, and I'm gonna show you guys how to completely change your steak game. These are gonna be the best steaks I've ever made, most interesting thing I've ever done on top of a steak, and I'm gonna show you how you can use a grill, or even an oven for that matter, to impress a lot of people with a really fantastic steak. Let's go. We are going to talk about steak toppings today, and I have a really cool way of doing this, which you can use for keto, you can use it for ketovore, you can use it for carnivore, you just customize what goes into it to fit whatever proper human diet you are on. And when you have something like this little grill, you can do it under a broiler, you can do it in a pan on the stove, you can have all these different options that makes this really accessible to however you like to cook your steaks, but it's something really special. And I'm gonna show you this really incredible Kamado style grill from London Sunshine. Let me tell you just a little bit about it. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna get this outside, we're gonna get some charcoal going, we're gonna grill up some steaks. Let's check out this Kamado grill. This is the London Sunshine Mini Cadet 13 inch style Kamado grill. This ceramic domed grill is not only efficient with its use of charcoal or wood, whatever fuel source you're using, but it's also extremely good at retaining the heat so you can cook evenly and on top of it it is extremely portable so honestly you could throw this in the back of your car in the back of your rv take it on a trip take it camping keep it in the backyard whatever it is you want to do this small convenient portable london sunshine kamado style ceramic grill is going to do exactly what you need it to do let's take a look at some of the features let me show you how we're going to use this you can see the conveniently located temperature gauge here on the dome of the ceramic grill because this is a five-in-one grill. You can sear, grill, roast, smoke, or even bake by controlling the temperature and using the dome shape and the convenience of this amazing ceramic grill. You can also see the airflow vent here at the bottom of the grill. You can also see there is one on top. You can open this and adjust it in various ways to control the temperature your charcoal or wood is going to burn at. This is why you can get such even temperature control and heat distribution so you can use this grill for so many different methods of cooking. The lid conveniently flips up and it has a spring mechanism on the back that keeps it from flying open too far so you don't have to worry about something like your grill tipping over when it's filled with hot charcoal. You can see the 10 plus inch grill great size. It's perfect for anywhere from two to four people. I can fit four burgers or two very large steaks on it, no problem. Because of the safety features of this grill, I am not in any way worried about having this in my backyard. It's extremely easy to use. I also think these Kamado egg-shaped grills are just one of the coolest looking pieces of gear you could possibly cook with. It's just really cool, and it's gonna look great sitting on your pack deck, in your backyard, wherever it is you would like to use this. I also found this extremely easy to put together and screw everything down nice and tight when it first arrived. Right out of the box, no problem. I love using this grill. As you can tell from the dirty charcoal plate in the bottom, it's easy to start, it's easy to cook with. Links are gonna be down below on the screen with a discount code for you as well. Let's go ahead and use this amazing grill and make some incredible steaks today. All right, y'all, while the charcoal is heating up for the grill, we're gonna go ahead and get a few things out. We're gonna put together three different kinds of toppings. I'm gonna show you three versions I really like. You can customize these, use all sorts of different things to do this, but I'm gonna show you the process. I'm also gonna show you I have two steaks that are dry brined. I'm gonna link to a video down below where I show you guys how to dry brine steaks. I have one that is not dry brined. They're all three the exact same, the one is not dry brine, so as we're trying them all and we have all the different toppings, we can also explain the difference in the texture and the flavor between the steaks that are dry brined and the one that's not. I'm gonna show you all that stuff. Let's go ahead and get some stuff out and let's make some steak toppings. 
So this is gonna be our base recipe. We're starting out with four ounces of softened cream cheese. And along with that, I'm gonna add in one egg yolk. Four ounces of cream cheese and one egg yolk will give you a base recipe that will work for three to four steaks, depending on the size and how much you use. Just stir this together until it is completely combined. Next, to help this firm up, I'm going to add in one teaspoon of beef gelatin. I'm gonna sprinkle this very carefully over the surface and immediately start to stir so that we don't get any clumps of gelatin. This will help firm up the mixture. So this is the base recipe that we're going to use for the topping to go on the steaks. Now we're gonna add different things into this. That gelatin is going to sit, it's gonna suck in some of that moisture. It's gonna firm this up as that cream cheese cools down a little bit. And it's just gonna make it hold on to that steak a little bit better when we go to put it on top. And then the egg yolk is gonna help set it. So we're gonna mix that gelatin in really well. We're gonna let that sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And then we can go ahead and mix in all of our other ingredients and we're gonna make some steak toppings. All right, so this is the classic that started it all. This is Ash's favorite combination for when I do steak toppings like this. So I'm gonna take about a third of this mixture. I'm gonna put it in a separate bowl here so we can start adding some stuff into it. So I have a couple of three tablespoons of this mixture. I have about the same amount in ground horseradish. Make sure you read the label because sometimes they put sugar in it. This one is just horseradish, salt, and vinegar. And this is grated Parmesan cheese, about the same amount as the horseradish. I'm gonna do about a half of a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna do some fresh ground black pepper, maybe a half a teaspoon. Half of a teaspoon of dry thyme. And a pinch of salt. Now we're just gonna mix that together really thoroughly. This next one is really special. This is a take on the idea of Cheddar Bay biscuits. We're gonna use crab, we're gonna use cheddar, and we're gonna use a twist of lemon. Check this one out. So I'm gonna put another third of this mixture into a separate bowl. I'm also grating some mature white cheddar. Use any kind of cheddar you would like. So we're gonna do equal parts of our base sauce. This is a sharp, mature English cheddar and crab meat. And I'm gonna add in garlic powder, about a teaspoon, about a half teaspoon of white pepper. And we can't forget the parsley. A teaspoon should do. And we're just gonna mix that together well. Next, we're gonna make bacon and blue cheese. So I'm gonna take a few strips of bacon and slice them up nice and small so we can crisp these up for our topping. For the third one, we're doing bacon, blue cheese. I'm gonna use equal parts of bacon, blue cheese, and our base sauce. These are fried nice and crispy, just the way we like. I'm also gonna use garlic powder and black pepper for seasoning. A teaspoon of each should do a good job. And we combine it well. So all of these recipes are completely customizable. So if there's something you don't want in it, make sure to leave it out. If there's something that you would like to add to it, you can totally do that. I think it sounds really good. I'm gonna go ahead and dice up a little bit of shallot and I'm gonna saute it with some butter. We're gonna add that with the blue cheese and bacon as well. So you can light this grill with the interior portion of the grill. It has instructions on how to do that. I personally enjoy using a chimney, so that's what I'm gonna do. Our charcoal is ready. Let's go ahead and dump it in the grill. Both of them all the way to get the grill 
nice and hot so we can sear those steaks. Just gonna add some sauteed shallots in with that bacon and blue cheese. The mild sweetness of shallots is really nice against that sharp pungency of blue cheese. So we've got our steaks ready. We have our three toppings ready. These two steaks in front are the ones that have been dry brined. You can see they are a little bit deeper red color and they are not as shiny because they have been dried off on the surface. So make sure to go check out that video. Those are gonna be absolutely amazing. This one's gonna be great too. It's just not quite as texturally and flavor wise as amazing as a dry brine steak, but it's a good comparison for us to do. I'm gonna brush all three of them with bacon grease from that bacon that we used in the mixture. I'm gonna add some salt to the one that has not been dry brined because it has not yet been seasoned. And then we're gonna fire up the grill and get these things going. After we flip our steaks to the second side, it's only gonna be a few minutes until they're ready. We're gonna go ahead and put our toppings on each of the steaks. Just put a spoonful on, spread it around, make sure it's a nice even coating all the way across the top. And then we're gonna close the lid back down, finish up these steaks. That'll cook the steak the rest of the way and the topping as well. All right, we can go ahead and pull our steaks off grill. All right, here are the steaks from the London Sunshine Mini Kamado Grill. Nothing tastes and smells like charcoal, truthfully. Absolutely amazing. So we have the bacon and blue cheese topping here. We have the crab and lemon here with the cheddar. And we have your favorite, the Parmesan and horseradish. We're gonna have some fun. Yeah, we are. I mean, look at this. That's right. I know that one is my favorite, but yeah. I've never actually tried these two, I don't think. So, Great. and now which one is this again, babe? That's the bacon and blue cheese. Bacon and blue cheese. Holy moly. That is how you eat a steak right there. I've never been so happy. This is incredible. So, so tender, super juicy. The cheese and the bacon, it's almost like, it's like a sauce, but not. You taste the bacon and you taste the blue cheese and it's so good, but it like complements the meat. It doesn't like overpower it, right? So right. you still get like the good flavor of a steak and then you just get like these little highlights of bacon. The grill does such an incredible job for like two of us, or if you're like in an RV, you're camping, you're traveling, it's a perfect size. It's so easy to work with. It doesn't take that much charcoal to get it nice and hot. All of the codes for the discount and the link to the products and everything is gonna be down below. Thank you, London Sunshine, for sending that. We didn't have a grill. No. This one is small enough. We can take it with us places if we need to. Yeah. So it's gonna be really nice. And for the two of us, it's perfect because I was able to do two steaks 
I went ahead and did these in two batches and made three steaks tonight to do three different toppings, but normally two steaks would be plenty mm -hmm. for the two of us. And these are big steaks. So that one in front of you is the crab with lemon and there's more lemon wedges if you want some more lemon on it. I'm sure you I'm will. really excited to try the crab though. This, this looks awesome. Mmm. Wow. I love the crab meat. I also didn't know how I was going to feel about the lemon. It's amazing. The charcoal flavor on the steak, the way the steak cuts, incredible. Are all these steaks, were these all dry brine? These two were. Interesting. Okay. That one is not. So I definitely tasted a difference. First bite. The steak itself is cooked well and I get a good charcoal flavor. Mm -hmm. This is not as juicy tender uh, as that one. Yeah. So I definitely noticed that in the first bite. Yep. You can also tell when mm -hmm. you guys watch the video, you can see the color difference in the crust, the sear that we get on this one versus what the other two looked like. Mm. The other two went brown and got a really roasted color much, much faster, much better. Mm. Dry brining a steak makes all the difference. So it's cool how even with toppings on it, you can mm -hmm. instantly tell which one is which. And all three of these are the exact same kind of steak. Mm. It's just the dry brine is the difference and you can immediately pick out which one it is. That's actually crazy because I've never tasted mm -hmm. dry brine and non back like that. And yeah. the steak is delicious, but it would be way better if it was dry brine. Absolutely. There is your this is my favorite. favorite. I'm this curious is... if it'll still be your favorite after this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think this will always be my favorite. This is so good. Again, immediately can taste that this is a dry brine steak. The steak, charcoal flavor, tender, juicy. This is always my favorite that you've done. I like it because it's like creamy. Mm. It's almost like having a bit of like a, a creamy, cheesy sauce on your steak, but then you get like the horseradish. So it's not like it's spicy, but there's just a little bit of like a kick afterwards. Yeah. Yet it still doesn't overpower the steaks. We eat steaks, I think, simple. Uh, yeah, burger patties. we have like burger patties or steaks or chicken, simple things mm -hmm. like five, six nights a week usually. Other than when we film recipes, but this is a really cool way to dress them up. Yeah. Also, I feel like if we went to out to dinner, I also don't know any restaurant that would serve me something that's tasty, mm. but it would probably be at least a hundred dollar dinner. Um, yes. Yeah. This would be a hundred dollar steak in any restaurant. They are just super high quality. There's a lot of attention to detail, especially the dry brining like that, like to take the time to age a steak like that, even if it's just overnight, no restaurant would do that mm -hmm. for you for less than a hundred bucks. It's, it's absolutely amazing to have steaks this way. And as you guys saw, it's very easy to make that base mixture mm -hmm. and then just throw in all the flavors that you like. So you like certain herbs, you like certain spices, you don't want certain herbs or spices. You like things like crab meat, you don't like things like that. You can modify this however you want. You could take a little salad shrimp and chop them up in little mm -hmm. tiny pieces and you could do like some Cajun seasoning. You could put like a little Cajun shrimp topping over this or you yeah. could do like some crawfish tails and do Cajun stuff. You could do any kind of French combination of things like you could do tarragon and you could do lemon and just a whole bunch of different things. You could make any combination you want, make it as keto, ketovore or carnivore as you want because it's so easy to customize it and it's all about that incredible steak, which is a hundred times better coming off of that London Sunshine Kamado charcoal grill. Now, if you don't have a grill and you don't have the money for a grill right now, that's okay. No need to fret. You can cook a steak any way you would normally cook it. If you're doing it in a skillet, you'd put your topping on and just throw it uh, a lid over top of it, or you could finish it under a broiler. If you're doing your steak some other way, you can put the topping on it and then you can just slide it under the broiler. Just make sure you don't overcook the steak before you put it under a broiler, but you can finish this topping with a broiler just as easy as I did on the grill. No problem at all. I love steaks, but when you eat them almost every day, it kind of gets boring. Yeah. When you first do that, it takes a little while to adjust to. It does. If people are trying to adjust, this is a great way to adjust. Yeah. What a great way to get some protein and, and enjoy a good steak and just not have it taste the exact same. Guys, there you go. That's how we do the steak topping. That's how we make it super customizable, how you can just take a steak and elevate it to something a little bit more special. Click the link below, check out that London Sunshine Grill, because if you're looking for something that's small, compact, easy to move around, easy to work with, it's great for a couple of people, or even if it's just you by yourself, that is a great way to get into one of those ceramic egg shaped grills without having to spend an arm and leg because they are definitely better priced than their competitors. 
and it does an absolutely amazing job. I love having it. We've done some burger patties. We have done now these steaks. It's going to be a regular staple for us when the weather is nice enough for me to go out and use it. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, London Sunshine, for sending that grill. We are going to give it a loving home and we're going to use it a whole bunch. You guys go check out London Sunshine down below. We love every single one of you guys. All of my links are down below as usual. This is Chris Cook in Nashville, my beautiful wife, Ash Taylor. Guys, eat your meat, especially when you have an amazing topping on a steak. Love your life. We're going to see you here in the kitchen and maybe out back at the grill for some more amazing recipes. That grill is my new favorite thing in this house. <laughs> Name something we own in this house that can make something this tasty. Well, me. Other than you. Other than me. Yeah, I can't get rid of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're the best in the whole wide world. Can you have some steak? Yeah. She likes the grill too.